I apologize for my exotic presentation translated by Google and my French accent <laughs> without the famous British humor and also for my non-erotic vision of archaeology. You will see. As long as archaeology was called the study of ancient things, things were simple. It was enough for an artifact to be ancient, to be archaeological. When the same method were applied to more and more recent contexts, the situation became more vague. So, should there be a chronological limit to the extension of archaeology? At the very moment when its semantic extension met with great success in the arts and philosophy, as a metaphor mainly. Processual archaeology had tried to convince itself of the scientific status of this discipline, an approach considered naive by advocates of hermeneutics, then passing from the linguistic term to the ontological one with the material culture. The relation between men and objects were then conceived within the framework of the actor network theory by insisting more or less on the symmetry of these relations. The question of the definition of archaeology is still being discussed. Several objects were assigned to archaeology, with some example here, and particularly French example for your information. <laughs> Whatever our choice, this leads, leads to this question, for example, in a supermarket. What an archaeological reasoning uh, or an archaeological evidence would it be in this case? Which contradicts common sense on Google, for example. Then, have we not been too normative, more than descriptive? The archaeologist wanted to define an autonomous discipline that studies both ancient objects and, and those of the present. But artifacts are, character, are characterized by three components. Shape and functionality can be approached in every context, while the function is partly related to linguistic performance. Participating observation is the only way to fully determine the identity of artifacts. Then, why would it be the archaeology that would name this kind of study, whereas it is generally practices, practiced without verbal testimonies? And what to do with the eco facts collected in the excavation? And what to do with the institution of which the history speaks? institution that can help us to understand our remains. But what theory for this discipline that wants to become autonomous? Does it still have the status of science? That is to say, at least the power to prove something? In a recent book, a small <laughs> thing, I, I tried to, to take up the question differently, more analytically, distinguishing three aspects. No, entirely independent. So epistemology, historiography, and sociology of science. In the first place, that of epistemology related to ontology and semantics, this belonging to common sense. My intuition as a field researcher is to return to the question of period and to ask the question of what can be known during this operation. First, we catch something very heterogeneous and aggregate. Aggregate is a set of elements, juxtaposed and units by a certain degree of cohesion, a certain structuring, and the sum of which does not bring about an organic or a functional unit, as was thought as a whole by no subject is written. <laughs> It is a document that can be compared to text and picture, but which has no point of view or framework. Nobody tried to manipulate us with an aggregate. Because an aggregate is unthinkable, unspeakable, it does not interest philosophers because it's impure. An aggregate can be, descri can be described by its parts. This can be called stratigraphic analysis, 
and can be treated by the graph theory or the Meri Meriot topology. For an aggregate to be archaeological, it must have a, an artifact must be a special part of it and not merely a, merely a constituent. <coughs> what can be exclude those these definitions in terms of cost and benefits? To so see a few example, sand heap, fluvial deposit, winds, and the mesil French <laughs> in his labor in, in his labor. <coughs> um, all the things that are too homogeneous without evidence of local presence or that can be think as a whole by somebody are not uh, archaeologic in this sense that uh, these are sedimentology, geomorphology, history of art, socio anthropology. More or less, neither as a jigsaw puzzle. In this onto-epistemic situation that we can generally find, that we must not confuse with a simple method. For, ex for example, the Texan garbage experiment, rubbish, uh, for me is only a method, it's not an, an archaeological situation because we have address uh, for every uh, garbage, uh, for every family, we know the, the social structure. The archaeological inquiry proceeded to dismantle a singular entity entirely special and therefore viewable in many ways, with some cohesion and structure from various material elements, which we call aggregate. And uh, in, there are two questions in this order. What is there? And then what happened here? We, uh, there is a decoupling between space and time, like in photography, but without the assurance of co-presence. We make inferences from the structure and the contents of the aggregate, assuming the existence of other things, events, and persons. It's a French philosopher. <laughs> These three categories answering three fundamental questions correspond to a minimalist ontology that which is needed for any narrative at all scale or to ask other questions, for example, on the type of society. So things uh, answer to the question what, events, the question why, and persons, question who. But in this minimalist ontology, uh, there is no place first for animals and process we can introduce uh, further. Oh. Hello. Like any, like any research on indices, we first have the consequences to find the causes. The, this approach by aggregates is basically discontinuous, but we try to approach form of continuity through the analysis of, this, of its content to reduce the archaeological vacuum between the aggregates. Unlike geology or geomorphology, this inquiry is, at, is on all scale. It's mesoscopic scale, the scale of the person who dig and the, 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 the scale of the person we are looking for, and the scale we decide the, the disassembly of the aggregates. But reference is also made to a microscopic scale from sample in the laboratory confinement and also to macroscopic scale, that of the geographic entities. These two scales correspond to an incomplete exploration with particular dependency links with mesoscopic exploration and this, in theory, complete. All this part of the survey can be linked with to, speci to specific groups. This is a chapter of the sociology of science that I do not have time to develop here. 
Finally, I have time. <laughs> Finally, are there any concept proper to archaeology? As they, as there must be in any knowledge, I see only two. Once the analysis of the aggregate carry out, uh, you can see um, the closed assemblage. In French, we say ensemble clos, ensemble ouvert, and see, you see a, 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 a grave and a, and, and a Magdalenian site on the opposite for the two example. With, diff with, with intermediate cases like Pompeii, it's between uh, closed assemblage and open assemblage, but the three, so emblematic as they are with the public, are, not, are certainly not the most representative case of archaeological practice. Thank you. Thank you.